the futures of Jaden Ivey and Isaiah Stewart on the Detroit Pistons have once again come up in the Pistons Twitter sphere and the, the news landscape of the NBA. And we'll dive into an article written by Bleacher Reports, Eric Pincus today, which kind of had some nuggets of information around the pair of Pistons. But before we get into it, I'm your host, Jack Kelly. You can follow me over on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, any social media platform at Pistons underscore Jack. And if you're feeling so kind, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, we're at for around three, 3.2K subscribers. We've seen some huge growth this offseason, and I'm super, super excited for the coverage I'm going to bring you this season, which will all be revealed in the coming weeks. But stick with me, subscribe, and I promise you we're going to have a hell of a lot of fun this season. But as for today's show, as I mentioned off the top, uh, Bleacher Report put an article out today and it was kind of one, it was titled one realistic or one dream trade for each uh, team in the league. And to be honest, these kinds of articles don't normally pique my interest uh, in the sense of like, I'm not going to go through and read all of it, but they normally like fake trades and that kind of thing doesn't get me too excited. It just never has. But there's normally within these articles, some nuggets of info around what people are hearing, what the ongoings are perhaps behind closed doors about certain players in the league. And in this article here, we got a couple of nuggets of info around Jaden Ivey and Isaiah Stewart. And I'm going to start here with Ivey because the Pistons former fifth overall selection in the 2022 draft has been a topic of conversation all summer, but much of last season, the handling of Jaden Ivey, uh, his development under Monty, and now kind of does he fit with Cade is the big question, at least from my standpoint. But it's been a hot topic conversation. What's his role going to be? But uh, in this piece today, uh, Bleacher Report's Eric Pincus wrote, some around the league speculate that the Pistons aren't sold on Ivy, but there's no compelling reason yet to think he's going to be moved. Now, just a small nugget there. It kind of, to be honest, that aligns with kind of my gut feeling on Ivy. And it feels like uh, I, I spoke about kind of who could be traded first and that kind of thing. And Ivy's right at the top of the list for me. And that's because of the position he plays and kind of the potential value he could have around the league. And uh, I think the way that Trajan's come in and built this team, he's clearly there's a role there for Ivy opening night. Like that's not a shocker, but I think – Jaden Ivey and Jalen Duran in particular are two young players that I would suspect Trajan will be having a keen eye on this season to see do they have, are they one able to show improvement this season, but more so how do they fit long-term with this team? Um, you know, we've seen Duran, like I'm not to get off topic here, but we've seen Duran fit offensively with Cade, but defensively there's a lot to be figured out there. And then Ivey just hasn't been able to put consistently good basketball together alongside Cade. And we all know there's more of an investment in Cade, uh, both financially and kind of just in terms of who's a better player, like Cade's the guy for this team. He's kind of the leader of the franchise as currently stands. So Ivy really has to figure out this season how to play off Cade and if he can, because if he can't, I truly think come the trade deadline, he could be moved or definitely next off season when he becomes extension eligible. Now, the Pistons aren't sold on Ivy. That phrase there shouldn't be too much of a shock, but I think for some fans who may be a huge Jaden Ivy believers, uh, that might come as a shock because, I mean, I was, I must admit, last off season, I was, I was a huge fan of Jaden Ivy. I thought he was in for a huge season, and I think partly that was derailed by Monty Williams. But I also think towards the end of the season, when Cade went out, uh. I think there was some real opportunity for Ivy there to close the season strong. And quite frankly, I was really disappointed with the way he closed. Uh, oftentimes I forgot he was on the court and he just didn't really have that kind of standout performance. Um, he, he was really good around the all-star break, but um, you know, it just was a bit inconsistent for my liking. And to be honest, he just, apart from one game with Cade against the Nets where they both had 30, I truly don't think the two of them played well together in a game. And whilst I still think Jaden Ivey uh, can work in Detroit and could go 
to another NBA team and thrive as a starting point guard, I think he has a lot to prove here in Detroit to warrant a kind of extension and a long-term investment. So uh, the way I interpret this is that Jaden Ivey has 50-odd games before the trade deadline to really make an impact. Um, and if he can't show that he fits, I think that the Pistons will definitely be looking for a deal at the trade deadline. But if they can't find one then, I think it would be a case of finding one in the offseason. Um, because I've heard people talk about him maybe potentially being like a Malik Monk type for this team. And whilst I kind of see that, I just don't think Jaden's going to settle for that kind of role this early in his career. And may, may, that that's just my gut feel. Like he's a guy who came in top five pick. People spoke about him like he was a top three guy in that class. Uh, that's going to be tough to see happening now. Like Chet and Paolo are clearly on another level. but. Um, it's. I just think a guy with Jaden's work ethic, and nah, I just can't see him settling for a, a six-man kind of heater role with his first team on a rookie contract. Like I think he's going to be. I, I just don't see that. So I think he's either going to be a starter alongside Kate, or he finds a new team. I, that that's they're the two situations for me. How that plays out is going to be very interesting. And I think, as I said before the All Star break, we're going to uh, really find out if him and Kate can make it work because I think. The idea of him and Kate at their peak and if they get close to their potential is super exciting. They're so dynamic offensively. They complement each other well. If they get to the ideal, uh, low, like if they get to the ideal or reach the ideal ceiling we think they can get to as a duo, I think it's really exciting. But to, like, to date, we just haven't seen it, whether it's for injury, poor coaching, or just honestly, just not being able to mesh together on the court. It's... It's been a bit frustrating so far. So keep your eye on Jaden Ivey. But the other kind of player that got mentioned as I spoke about earlier was Isaiah Stewart in this article. And there was a note here from Pincus that Detroit may be looking to move veterans to add young players and draft considerations. Several teams will be interested in Isaiah Stewart. This isn't necessarily something new. Uh, like... In terms of the first part of this statement in the Pistons looking to move veterans to get draft capital and young players, I think that's 100% going to happen. I would be shocked if all four or five of Isaiah Stewart, Fontecchio, uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., Beasley, and Tobias Harris, I'd be shocked if all five of them were on the team. Post-trade deadline, if unless they're like right in like the top eight for the playoff, like if they're in playoff contention, I could see them keeping the team as is, but... I truly think Trajan is the way he's spoken about trying to acquire first round picks at that deadline. I truly think he's going to move at least one of these veterans. And Isaiah Stewart to me is now a veteran. I think Stu has tremendous value to a playoff team. Like, and I think he has value on this team this season. Like Stu, for those that don't know, you can see his jersey up the back there. He's literally my favorite player on this team. So Anything I say here is not to disrespect him. If anything, it's a compliment. But I just think there's reasons why in past seasons, Oklahoma City, Boston Celtics, uh, who's another team that's been interested in? There's another one. Slipped my mind. But multiple kind of like teams with championship aspirations are interested in Isaiah Stewart. And that's because of the defensive versatility he brings, the grit he brings, and then also the fact he's added a three-point shot is just like – when you think about role playing bigs, whether he starts if your starting five is injured or he's your first big off the bench, has shown he can play a little bit at the four, not for not heaps of minutes, but he is a guy that come playoff time, I truly think is going to make his name. Like I, I really believe that. And whether that's in Detroit or not, I, I would love to see Stu in a playoff series in the Pistons colors, but um, I could also... I, I think now with new a new front office, I, I think the likelihood of Stu being traded has gone up as much as I hate to kind of admit it. And I think he is a guy that with a, I think he has 60 million over the next four years, a really good contract. Um, I know that might sound like a lot to some, but that's kind of going to be the mid-level in the next year or two with the way the cap's going. So that is an attractive contract. And you, that's a Stu to me is a guy you could get a first for from a contender come the trade deadline. So uh, this doesn't really shock me at all. Um, and the one thing I want to note just with the front office changing, like 
I know for a fact, like I have this, I know this from inside that Stewart was literally one of Troy Weaver's favorite players. So the likelihood of being traded while Troy was in office was very, very low. Now that Troy's gone, it's hence why I think it's a lot more likely. And it, um, if the Pistons aren't winning enough games, like I think the writing's on the wall, like that's why they've got Paul Reed as Isaiah Stewart insurance, or maybe some, for some reason, Paul Reed goes off and they can get something for him. But I could see a world where Stu's traded to try and get some more picks in for Trajan to really build his own young core, which I know is not necessarily what we all want to hear, but I think Trajan's intentions have been pretty clear from at least what I've heard that he's not looking to like tank and bottom out. I don't think this is like another, you know, I don't think anyone plans to win less than 20 games, but I do think this draft class is extremely talented. And I do think that Trajan is going to be looking to try and get multiple picks in this first round. Unless the Pistons shock the world and start out like five, they, they win 20 of their first 35 games. Even still, like I could see them being the, U even if they were like the Utah Jazz from two years ago with Larry Mark and being an all-star, like that team still finished in like, I think they were still like a, they had a top 10 pick and could have been higher. So um, yeah, I want to see the team win games, but I think there is a real, I think it's, it would be unrealistic of me to think that parts of this young core and veterans won't be moved at the trade deadline uh, to try and really find that, you know, if Cooper flags a real possibility of where the Pistons are, I think Trajan's going to pivot and get as many picks and try and put the Pistons in a position to take one of these top three guys. So we've kind of gone a bit off topic there, but that's my thoughts on Ivy and um, Isaiah Stewart's the, their trade potential, those weren't necessarily reports. They're more just news and kind of behind the scenes kind of things that Eric Pincus has heard. Um, but it's interesting, and I think it creates a very good conversation around the young core and veterans and how this roster is going to look um, at certain stages of this season. So let me know your thoughts on Jaden and Ivy and Isaiah Stewart. Will they be traded? Let me know also your thoughts on how many of these veterans you see on the roster post all-star break because i think that is definitely a good point of conversation as well um but as always uh keep sticking with me the content's going to be churning out a lot more now as we enter training camp pre-season i promise i'm going to be more consistent I, I did have a break but i'm really excited to be back now and like i said off the top i have some very exciting stuff coming that i can't wait to announce with you all so uh thank you once again and as always go pistons mm -hmm.